And joining us now here in our studio on campus of the University of Miami and been busy, it's uh, wide receivers coach Ron Dugans. How's that fax machine going? <laughs> Not going fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, we got some uh, guys in here early uh, today and early also that are already in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we have to differentiate there. That's but let's true. talk about, let's stay in the present with today and uh, one of the players coming in. Uh, same last name, different kind of player. Evidence the Joku <laughs> comes in. Yeah, he comes in, man. He's he's a um, you know really good skill set. You know, tall, athletic kid, um, about six four. You know, you see uh, David the Joku, then you see Evidence, and it's like wow. You know, hopefully he grows to be, you know, look like a Greek god like that. And um, but Evidence, he, he's he's um, done a really good job this football season. Uh, you watch him run routes. To be that size, he's a really good route runner. And uh, his catch radius, it's like, uh, you know, it's off the charts, mm -hmm. you know. So got a chance to go see him play up in the championship game. Uh, did, did a really good job up there. And I was, I was freezing, you know. But um, he, he showed a lot, of, a lot of potential. Coach, one of the challenges has to be when, when you're recruiting is when you go, let's say, to New Jersey to see Evidence and Joku. And... How do you, I guess at a championship game, it gives you a little bit better advantage, but let's say early on in the season, how do you compare the talent from Florida talent to Georgia talent to Alabama talent to New Jersey talent? You've got to really kind of gauge that at some point, that they're, the talent that they're playing against. Yeah, and, that, and that's one thing. You know, you'll see a guy making plays, and you get caught up into, wow, and look what he's doing. He's running away from this guy. Right. And you go to another state, he's running away from that guy. You know, then you go back, and it's like, okay, well, that competition is not very good, mm -hmm. you know. And um, but is he doing what he's supposed to be doing against the competition? You know, like for myself, I, I go back when you know I was in high school, and you know, I went to Family High. Right. You know, and the competition was was okay, and um, but was I doing what I was supposed to be doing? Right. And I got a chance to go into college, go to NFL. You know, so I, I can't say okay, well this kid's not playing anybody, you know, because I went through the same thing that the kid's going through now. So you kind of gauge it, look at the skill set, look at the potential. Um, you know, can he get in and out of breaks, you know, breaking points? Can he catch the football? Does he high point the football? Does he catch the ball away from his body? You know, uh, his breaking point, is he smooth? And so you just look at the intangibles of the kid and just kind of, you know, compare them, you know, to the different skill sets of different guys you're recruiting from different states. And you kind of bring it all together and, and uh, you kind of chart them and put them in, in order and um, you kind of take it from there. We have, uh, you have a, uh, an interesting player that's already here. Uh, an athlete, DJ Dallas, 5'10", 191 pounds, could fit into somewhere in the receiving core, right? Yes, sir. Or maybe anywhere, but uh, yes. when you get a player like that, who gets first dibs? Hopefully me. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been kind of, you know, kind of talking to Coach Rick kind of behind the scenes, you know, about possibly getting him uh, on the offensive side of the ball. But when you look at a kid like, like DJ Dallas, the first clip that I saw from his uh, sophomore year, um, the kid went about... 200 yards to, to run 60, to, you know, to score a right. touchdown, you know, and uh, he does some really good things with the ball in his hands. Um, he's really good in space. Uh, he, he does a good job making guys miss. He sticks the toe in the ground to change directions, you know, so, and the, the biggest thing about DJ Dallas is he's a competitor and he's a leader. You know, the, the things that you don't see on film, uh, when talking to the kid, talking to the coaching staff, uh, you see that, you know, you, you get a chance to see what type of character he is. And um, just overall, as a person, what type of you know guy he is. So he does all the right things. He says all the right things. And uh, I'm excited about him. Yeah, you know what I see, Coach? I see touchdown maker, which is uh, <laughs> what college football is today. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, Quick scores. Exactly. You know, and he does that. He scored a lot of touchdowns. And um, that, that's what we need, a guy that can come in and uh, make people miss, score touchdowns, whether it's on offense or special teams. You know, and also, you know, if it is on the other side of the ball. You know, but I just got to keep, I got to find a way. You guys got to help me find a way to convince Coach Rick to keep my <laughs> offense. <laughs> well, if he makes a lot of first downs, which it looks like he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coach, one thing that, that, that excited me about him was, was how hard uh, he helped you recruit this class. I mean, th <laughs> this guy came in, committed to the University of Miami, and says, mm -hmm. I'm going to commit, I'm going to get this class committed. I mean, he is a full fledged hurricane from day one. He, he's down one. Yeah, you know he's a dial. You know, and once he's he's a kid that once he gets, you know, he feels a certain way, in his heart, he's convicted of, 
listen, this is, you know, my signing class. You know, I trust the coaching staff. You know, I'm all in. You know, he didn't waver or anything like that. And uh, he just, he went over the top. Uh, he went above and beyond to make sure that the coaching staff knew that, Coach, I'm all in. You know, he even texted me one time, like, Coach, you know, make me great. You know, don't, don't let me slack. You know, make me, make, you know, make me into a great player. And uh, I'm just excited about as soon as he said, Coach, I'm coming, and he committed. You know, he stayed committed. He stayed loyal to us. And, um, you know, he just wanted to make sure we got the right teammates in. You know, people that, you know, if they, if they were kind of borderline, it was like a coach, if you don't want to be a cane, let's move on. I'm like, wow. You know, that, that's, how, that's how it should be. You know, we want guys that want to be Miami Hurricanes, you know, and um, he, he's done a lot for us. Let's spend a minute on that, Coach, because I think that uh, if you look at the personalities of universities around the country, I think it's important, or when Miami was at its best, yes. a, a large majority of the players that were here, that's what they wanted to be, was a Miami Hurricane. And I yes. think that, you know, in, in speaking with Coach Rick and, and the staff, you guys are looking for guys that want to be here. I'm sure there's a, a percentage that you have to recruit that don't understand the tradition or how things are done, but that's an important aspect of, of how they feel towards this university when you're recruiting them. Yes, and it's, it's you know, Mike Irvin said it, you know, talked about, you know, <clears throat> Green Tree practice field, you know, and, and the time and energy, sweat, blood, and tears that those guys spent on that football field. You know, Ray Lewis came at Paradise Camp and said, you know, either you, you know, we're not gonna beg you to come to Miami. You know, either you're with us or you're not. Right. You know, and when I heard that, it sent chills through my body, man. You know, because I knew, like, the guys that I've gone against or played with as teammates in the NFL, you know, and how much time they spent, you know, helping Miami build and build and stay consistent. You know, so that, that meant a lot to me. You know, so it's like, hey, you know, we shouldn't have to beg you to become Miami Hurricanes. You know, this is it's bigger than the coaching staff. It's bigger than the players. You know, it goes, you know, a long time ago, man, that the way this program was built, you know, and um, – the way that the former players felt about the program, you know, and you just see the tradition, you know, and when you see that when you're coming in as a coach, and also we try to get the players to see the same thing when they come in on visits, you know, and just try to get those guys to understand that, man, this is different. You know, it's, it's about family. You know, a lot of people say it's about family, you know, but that's the feel that you get when you get here, you know, and um, that, that's what made me feel comfortable, made me feel good about being a hurricane and um, coaching my players, you know, to become the top caliber guys like we used to have here, you know, uh, back in the day we won the championship. So that's something they want to get back to. Here, I'll make it simple for all of them. You want to be a freshman All-American wide receiver? Come play for Coach Ron Dugans. <laughs> Had one last year. There we go. All right, we're off and running here on National Signing Day. Coach, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's a Hurricanes wide receiver coach, Ron Dugans. Had Amon Richards, of course, last year. We're back with more on National Signing Day, so stay with us. We'll be right back.